and we are making sliding operable DIY easy to make windows. Right. Uh, so last time we made the fixed windows and you saw us install all of those. So this time we're making a uh, kind of step up is the DIY sliding cedar uh, acrylic panel actually windows. Mm -hmm. um, they worked out really, really well. I'm excited how they look. They, I mean, they really look great and they weren't hard to make. Yeah. Uh, so we're excited to share this with you. Please stick around, but we better get going. All right. But before we get to that, I'm Anna and this is my husband, Spencer. Back in 2013, we dove into DIY renovating our first home, never backing down from a project, no matter the challenge. Then in 2019, we sold our first home and bought our second, setting the stage for even larger renovations. Along the way, we also discovered our passion for gardening with a special love for Japanese maples and conifers. Lately, we've been hard at work building a two-story shed to create space for even bigger dreams ahead. If you like our content, please consider subscribing so that you're notified whenever our latest videos go live. But most importantly, welcome! Enjoy the video and join us in our epic journey. Let's go! Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today, we're working on the shed again near the end of our shed project. I know, it's so exciting. So today we are going to talk to you about our shed windows that we made that are functional, operable, opening windows. Right. They're sliding, you would call them sliding glass windows. We're actually using acrylic, but it's essentially a sliding glass window that actually functions. So fancy. Um, we're really excited about it. It worked great. Uh, and so I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, you could make this for your home, potentially. Yeah, but uh, these are definitely made for our shed. We cut some corners on the finishing on the back side of them, and you'd make them similar concept, but just a little bit more refined if you're going to make windows for your actual house. Well, and on the budget side, so I did the numbers, and each of these windows cost us roughly forty to forty-two dollars. Um, and price-wise, comparison to like a shed window provider, mm -hmm. it was the minimum was eighty dollars, and for something similar to these, even close, was around one hundred and sixty. Yeah, but you weren't even able to find these actual dimensions, so we would have yeah. had to build build our windows to the dimensions that we could find a stock window in. Right. So instead, we actually built the windows. Yeah. Uh, and with this too, we also got a nice cedar finish on it, and you can hopefully see that in the video right now. I mean, it looks really, really good. I mean, it looks custom, it looks great, and it saved us money. So overall, it's a big win. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to show you. We're probably gonna show you just us assembling one of these frames, uh, just because it's a little intense and we don't need to share it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. We'll show you one of them. It might be the last one that we actually did okay. that we got the best video for. Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna show you how we did it. Uh, we're gonna show you every step of the way, and then we're gonna show you us installing it. Um, so y'all, Buckle up, it's gonna yeah. be a long video, but it should be really good. We better get going. All right. Oh, one more thing. In addition to just making the window frames, we also made the sliding rails that we did for the frames to slide in. And that's also just made out of wood and pretty as cheap as you can get, I think. Honestly, it is. Uh, we did not buy a track for this. We did. There are aluminum tracks you could buy. We didn't buy any of that. We actually just used the cedar that we have. I did do a lot of research into things that we could buy and tracks and things, and we just decided to do this, and it's very, very cheap. <laughs> it's, yeah, cost effective. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it should keep the bugs out, the air out. It's, it does seal. You can feel it as soon as we close all the windows up here. You can feel it that it's really sealed in. Um, so anyway, all right, now we really should get going. Sure. <laughs> we're moving through the night like we're from a different star. Flying over streets and broken hearts. But they can even touch us with yeah. a different beat. Paradise is waiting and we bought the leaves. First step to building our sliding windows is to get the proper size for each opening. In order to do this, we're installing a window jam. First, we'll install the top and bottom pieces, get the measurement, and then install the side pieces. Yeah. 
Okay, so while Spencer's out there cutting the rest of the vertical pieces for this window frame, I thought I would talk to you about the windows themselves. So we are going to be installing windows in the rest of the shed. And the windows that we installed before were fixed windows. So that means that they don't open at all. And we installed them by simply just putting a stop, a piece of glass and a stop. And that basically just holds the, the glass in place, pretty simple. So these front two windows and the one side over there, we want those to be operable because we thought it might be nice to have a cross breeze in here. And honestly, having these windows open already up here, it makes a big difference. <laughs> so the operable windows, we had a couple of choices. So our first option was a window that would open with hinges. And the first thing that popped into mind was a window that opened like this. And that way, pretty simply, it could stay open by putting a prop stick there and not complicated whatsoever. Um, I didn't really like that choice because that meant the hinges would be on the outside of the building and it would be visible and I don't know if I can get some that are like weather resistant and it just wasn't great and that also would mean that the window wasn't, wouldn't be really open all the way, maybe like 45 degrees. Um, it would keep rain out if you accidentally left it open, uh, the rain would fall on it and then fall forward, so that's a bonus. Uh, the other choice was have it be more like a casement. So that's something that where the window, instead of opening this way, opens to the side. And that's a casement window, also with hinges, nothing fancy. We're not going to build complicated windows here. We were just going to put some um, hinges on there. And so finally, after a couple of days, we were like, wait a minute, it's a Japanese style shed. Why are we not making sliding windows? So sliding windows it is. In this case, we're just going to be building the window frame and having a piece of plexiglass on the inside. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be glass for us. Uh, plexiglass is clear enough and it's uh, shatterproof. It's not going to break. It's pretty safe. So for our operable window that's going to be sliding, we're going to be building it in kind of a similar way to the fixed windows in that it is going to be having two stops at the top, kind of like the fixed windows. So if these were our stops, these are not our stops, these are just little pieces of scrap I'm showing you. So on the top side, we're going to have a stop and a stop, and our window is going to slide between this groove. Also, we're not quite sure if one window in this set is going to be fixed and the other one's going to move, or they're going to be bypass windows. Uh, we'll just have to make that decision. Oh, another thing I forgot to say is that another reason why we want a sliding window is because we're going to have the decorative screen in front of these windows. And so a window that opens, that's going to be in the way. So <laughs> we wouldn't be able to have our screen if the windows open uh, out with hinges anyway. And also Spencer wanted me to mention that this is good practice for the door below, which we also want to be on a sliding track. I think we might go with some hanging hardware for the bottom door, but we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so I'm right now oiling all these boards for the sliding windows that we'll be making. Uh, just as a side note for uh, right now, I hear Anna talking about why we're deciding to do these sliding windows versus the other options we had. One of the other reasons that I doubt she's going to say, but maybe she does, is that uh, this is also practice for the door. So we've decided for our door, we're just going to do a sliding door very similar to these windows, but just on a larger, larger scale. You know, it's a practice run and uh, smaller scale, not as important. I, I'm having a really good time though. This is really fun. I'm enjoying making all these videos. I'm enjoying making the shed. Uh, it's looking the way that we really want it to look. It's looking very Japanese. Uh, it's fitting really, really into uh, our landscape. Um, it's looking like it's been there for a long time. We might cover up those CMU blocks at the bottom maybe, but uh, I mean, overall, I'm having a great time with this. I'm really excited that we did it and that it's turning out the way we wanted it to. Okay, so we are working on uh, the sliding windows. Uh, so for the first part that I need are the, I don't know what these would be called, rails, sides? Styles and rails, styles I don't know. Sorry. The There's piece of woods that, 
to pieces of wood that go on the sides of the window, top and bottom. Uh, so I'm cutting these to two and five eighths. That should allow us a good overlap. Uh, so this is two and five eighths. I'm gonna cut down a couple more. We need eight pieces total, and we're going for 34 inches across and roughly 27 inches tall. The height will vary depending on if it's at the middle of the window or at the front of the window. Um, so that actually will vary the height. But here we go, gotta make some more. Okay, what's the plan here with the uh, cedar? Uh, so you mean like color-wise or what? Yeah, what are you planning on doing like aesthetically? Okay, so what I'm thinking about, uh, so each board obviously have a, has its own look a little bit. Uh, and so what I would like to do is get the whole front side of each window out of the same run of board. And since I can get two passes of the board from each, like I get two sets out of each board, I think I can get enough to do that. So I just need a 34, a 34 and a 30, 27 and 27 ish. So you're trying to go for a continuous grain is what you're doing. No, not continuous, but a similar look because we're turning a corner. It's not going to be continuous, but it will have. Well, a it'll be look. sort of continuous. It'll at least have the same color. Would you like the continuous look to be across the top? Like the two top rails be from the same piece of wood? Instead of it like going around the cor around the square? Then, then it would be more of a continuous grain across the top, but I think it doesn't. Well, if we want a continuous grain, it'd be like, like if I had that as a continuous grain, right? It would be like this and then this. Yeah, that would look nice. Yeah, just across the. Yeah, so I'll do this as the, top. And if, this and will if, be the bottom, this will be the top. Well, and if you know what tr the, your front is, you can always write on the back side of them, top and bottom, and then that will know what's front and back too. Cause okay. it'll have the writing on it. Well, first I, so I measured the 34. I need to go cut it so then I can measure again to an appropriate length because you can't measure a cut before you cut. Yeah, that's true. So Anna has a magic technique on making everything line up. Let's find out what it is. Because I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's magic. But okay, so these are the back of the boards. So we decided this is going to be the front of our boards. So I'm going to draw on the back and we want to make sure that we know that these are the two that go together. So I could write back, left window, back, right window, or whatever on there. But to make sure we know that they go together, you take and you just draw a triangle. And that way, your two triangles are never going to be the same. If I do the same triangle on another piece, it won't perfectly line up. That way we know that these are the ones that go together. Hey, so what were you doing over there in the shed? Hey, so I just took these pieces. So these are our like vertical ones that are going to go like next to each other, right? So they're actually going to overlap a little bit because uh -huh. of like that's how we're supposed to do it because you have a vertical piece and so it looks these like are they, the vertical or the horizontals these are horizontals but i want to see how much they overlap to make sure it's appropriate okay so they will overlap each other by two and three quarters inches mm -hmm. and these uh styles or whatever they're called are two and five eighths so that's going to be fine like that'll be good okay good uh so it should work out that's enough of an overlap but hopefully not too much are we using the right terms is styles the right term i think you would do styles and rails but i don't know which one is which <laughs> yeah Okay. I honestly have no clue. Yeah, I'll have to just look that up. Okay, so something we figured out. <laughs> so we're cutting the 27 and 34, but we actually need them all to overlap. So here's what we're doing. We're, they're, all... they're all overlapping with each other, and then we're going to overlap them in an opposite way on the other side so yep. that we don't have to do any really fancy joinery. So this is 34. Basically, we had the 34-inch long piece of wood, and then we cut off this the much the width of this is our little template block. And then yeah. this is 27. All right, so I got to go cut another one of these to this length, and we should be good to go. Yeah. Hey, okay, I just want to say, so now this is all cut correctly. So this is the one side, and then what will happen, so this is like the other side, right? So this one stops here, so the next one is going to go over this here. This actually isn't cut to the right length yet. So this is, we're making a sandwich of wood and putting our plexiglass in between. Right, so we're having an overlap on each side so that the screws that we have here will end up interlocking with each board so that it's just easy. Um, I'm hoping this is right, this works. <laughs> I will use some tight bond. So now I'm using this as a template to get Got my it. other cuts.
So this is the idea. So if I, here, look, I'll, I'll, I'll lift it up here and you can see right there, this goes over that joint. And then this one is going over these joints. So they all interlock with each other. Y'all, we're acting like we're smart. This has probably been done so many times, but we did not find it when we Googled. So we feel like we're smart. <laughs> it's probably one of those super obvious things. I mean, every woodworker is probably watching this and be like, oh you my You dumb gosh. dumbs. <laughs> you know, this, uh, is, this is, I bet it has a name. I'm sure it's got a name. <laughs> all right. The real question is, is this 30 by at least 28, right? Yeah. It should be, yes, 29. Perfect. And 22. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They didn't have like a... 20... Yeah, the, the plexiglass is 28 by 30. They didn't have a 22 by 30, right? No, I tried. They didn't have anything smaller. Okay, because that would have been even better. Yeah. It's a 22 by 30, man. Hey, so this is kind of like a half lap joint, but not really because I don't know if it still counts because this would be one piece of wood and you would have like cut, cut out of the edge of it. And so these would have just been four pieces of wood. And instead we have separate pieces. This is still lapping over here, but this would have been one singular piece if it was an official half lap, I think. Uh, but our advantage is that we can put our plexiglass in there and sandwich it in there and then put that on there. Half lap. Hey, so here's our plexiglass. And let's see if it fits. There we are. I mean, this isn't assembled yet, so things are kind of a little sloppy and loose. But that looks fairly appropriate. Now we'll have to cut this down to length a little bit because it's too long. Okay, I'm inside the basement and I'm about to cut this plexiglass right here. Uh, scoring and snapping, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So I haven't been able to get a perfectly clean snap with this plexiglass. You can see here is a little bit of a shard that's left over that I can't snap off. So I scored it on one side a bunch and then I flipped it over and scored it on the other side and I removed the plastic film because I thought that might be something that might be hindering it. Uh, I just snapped it. It came off in shards <laughs> like this, but it came off in flat shards, just the other parts kind of snapped because we don't have, it doesn't have to be perfect for our purposes. Like these little triangle pieces that didn't snap off. Okay. Are there, but I don't think they'll be an issue because in our case, it doesn't really matter. It'd be nice if it was clean all the way across, but that's just what, how it happens. Okay, so now that we have that set up, Anna's cutting the plexiglass inside on our cutting mat. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out more. Now that we have a template that's working, I'm gonna start cutting, uh, basically copying this for the other window uh, while she's doing that. It should go pretty quick. So the sun is still up. We still have a little bit of time. I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to finish the front windows, maybe tonight. And then tomorrow we'll still have to work on that side window. So we're probably not gonna get it all done today, but we're getting a lot of progress made, so that's great. Okay, so uh, all four of these are cut. This is all we'll need for the front windows. Um, while cedar has a kind of pleasant smell while you're cutting it, uh, oak does not. Yeah, <laughs> like I, red, put, red I, oak. I put a mask on. So there you go, there's four stops and we'll cut them down to size once they're up there. Yeah, this is gonna be our track. Okay, so I just wanted to show how this will actually work. So each piece of wood would essentially sandwich the plexiglass. This would go over here like that. And this would go over here like that. And this would go over here.
and this right here, stuff like that. And we will pre-drill and then screw from the back side of the window. So there is one more way to do this, which I don't want to do. Yeah. Uh, if I was making this window for my house or a really ultra nice shed that had air conditioning and everything. That's ultra nice. What are you talking about? That's nice. It That's doesn't, nice. it doesn't have air conditioning. Oh, okay. If I was doing it to where I really wanted it sealed and everything I like that, see. I, see. I would likely route out in at least one of these, if not both, but probably one, uh, the, thickness. the thickness of that, I'd route it out so that it laid flat in here so you had a firm connection right here. Yeah, I agree, but right now, um, laziness, so. No, well, it's not laziness. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's extra steps. We're not quite woodworkers yet. We are carpenters. <laughs> and uh, I just don't want to make mistakes with what's working. If you're making this for your house or for a really nice shed or alternative dwelling unit or a tiny house, you probably do want to route that out and make sure that these actually can be flush to each other uh, when you screw them together. I bet it's going to make a big difference. Um, enough to where I should really do it. So we decided to go ahead and route down all of the boards. Uh, to do the routing, I actually just used a table saw. Uh, you can see me on the end here doing it. Uh, it turned out that the blade was the exact width that we needed for the plexiglass, so that's just what I used. And then you can see it fitting perfectly right here. This really worked really well, and that way everything kind of fits better. We're going to get a better adhesion with the glue. All right, time for actually assembling these windows. So we applied some wood glue on the ends here and then squared everything up with some framing squares. And I should say squaring everything up was a little bit difficult because there was no way to clamp it down after it was square. So now you can see it's putting the plexiglass in, so we're just lining it up, putting it in, and then putting glue around it to where all the boards will come together just to make sure we have really good adhesion. That's where most of the strength is going to come from for this entire window. And this window, since we didn't have a bunch of clamps available, we decided to screw the windows together, even though the glue is what's holding everything together at the end. Right. Uh, if you have like, I don't know, 20 or 30 clamps, I would strongly suggest that you just clamp it together. You don't have to do these screws here. We're using stainless steel screws because this is cedar. Uh, so that's the correct thing to do. And we were drilling holes through the plexiglass there in some of these situations uh, because we could. If you're using glass, you definitely cannot drill through yeah, your glass. This would be very risky if this was actually glass. Um, but there you go. So it's almost finished. Uh, didn't take that long and we just have to do it, I don't know, 20 more times. <laughs> 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, so it is 8.07 and we finished our first window. I don't think we're doing the rest tonight. We should get the other one done, I think, though, honestly, while we have some light. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So here, how's it look on the front? Looks nice. Oh, we got glue dripping down. All right, we got to take care of that, but that looks really nice. Hey, so what we're about to do is we're going to go see if these windows fit in the shed. We haven't actually looked. We don't know if this is going to work. You have to see if these are measurements are correct. We're terribly off. It could be a disaster. Right, we have no clue. <laughs> uh, they should be roughly correct. I'm expecting to have to uh, cut them a little bit on the table saw. Hey, that looks really good. Yeah, and it looks really nice and it fits perfectly. It's the next morning, these have dried and a little bit of glue has seeped out of the edges. So I'm gonna sand that off and then I'm gonna oil these windows. So Anna is sanding the frames and oiling them. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on installing the stops on the window. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm installing this trim with using the laser line to get it uh, just on the inside of the laser line. Uh, and then what I'll do without moving this, I was careful not to really go by there because I didn't want to move it. I'm gonna install the top, another one, just inside the line. Uh, this will get us a good starting point for these uh, windows. We can get the exact size they need to be. And uh, it also lets us have a, obviously a stop at the top and bottom. And then I have to do side stops behind each one on the side. 
And that should be about it. We'll have to do a, a stop back here for the third one. And uh, that'll be about it. But anyway, that's how I did it right there on the top. I'll show you really fast what that looks like. Okay, so now we have the uh, top stop and bottom stop installed. I need to do the very edge of each piece, uh, but that should be fine. And then uh, now we can actually get our real measurements for where these windows we placed. Good morning. Good morning. What are we doing? Installing these windows. Actually, right now, more specifically, we are putting them in the opening to see if they fit. If they don't fit, we'll trim them down just a little bit. Okay. Okay. And guys, uh, we fully expect them to not quite fit. I did it pretty close to the measurement that we measured and tipping them in. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit of an issue. Uh, this was the plan from the get-go uh, because each one has a little bit different of a measurement uh, depending on where it is on the actual window. A little tight. So too tight? Yeah. Do we need to cut off a whole lot? Yeah, let me see this one though. If I go here, mm -hmm. if this is the other one over here, mm -hmm. right? And it slides. Yeah. So we weren't quite sure where the measurement would fall on the actual window opening. Now that we have the stops down, we know exactly the measurement it needs to be. I had cut them to 27 and 3 eighths inches, but when I measured it, 27 and 1 quarter would work a little better. So what we're going to do is cut the top away so that we don't mess up any of the alignment. Uh, and we're going to cut away just a little bit at a time. Right now I'm going to go a little bit above 27 and a quarter, even though I know that's correct, and go check it and make sure if that's enough or does it need more play. Uh, because you have to tip it in, uh, it's going to have to be a little bit shorter than what we need, but we want to make sure we don't go too short to where the stops don't catch it. So we're going to sneak up on it with a cut. Yeah, we're going to sneak up on it. So right now I'm a little bit too far in. Yeah, we're that's that's more, more than, than I want to do. More than a blade's width. Important note here. So while we're doing this, we're making sure to keep this up at the right height because there's nothing here supporting it underneath this. Yeah, so I'm just here. I'm supporting this edge and I'm also just receiving it since we don't have a table for it to land on. I'm not pulling it towards me. I'm just here taking it and acting kind of like a table. And like I was saying, from the very beginning, we were expecting to have to do this. Uh, this is just the easiest way because our sill is at a slope. It's just easier to put the stops in place and then figure out the measurement. I guess we could have put the stops in place before we ever built the windows. But this way, it also makes sure that it's all flush. But and if we have to cut off more than just one blade's width, maybe if we do have to do it again, yeah. we could do the other side and it, then it would be even. You would have to do it to all three, though. Yes, I know. If you go from the bottom... Uh, if you go from the top, yeah, if you go from the bottom, everything shifts down. If you go from the top, nothing shifts. That's true. And it's just hidden behind the stop. All right. So here we go. There we are. Yeah. So it's nice, freshly cut. I mean, now it's, if it wasn't flat before. Now it is. It is absolutely now flat and flush. Yep. All right, let's go try this really fast to see if it fits. Okay. Mm. More. Does it need just a little bit more? I don't know. I mean, yes, but I don't know how much more. Oh, maybe just, a lot yeah, more. yeah, maybe a lot more. Okay, so we just uh, were able to put that one in. It worked great. Uh, for its location on the right side, it's perfect. However, on the left side, which is not where that one's going, it would be uh, too tight. So I've adjusted the saw just a little bit, uh, about an eighth of an inch more in, and then we'll be ripping uh, the next one down. This is the other one on the exact left opposite side. If you uh, adjusted this, this is still a blade's width. So well, then that's fine. They could have that just means been, our windows weren't perfect. Yeah, that means they weren't the same size because if you already adjusted it, it's yeah. back to blade's width again. So we're going to cut this down. The only thing we didn't say before is we're making sure to put it face down because that is the smooth side of it right now. It does have screws on the back side, and I don't want it to, you know, make marks on my table saw or dig into it. That's about it. Here we go. Putting on glasses. Okay, so let's go see if this fits. Okay, so now we're back up here. You're gonna see if it fits.
Yeah. Does that fit? I think so. Yeah, and it's nice and tight. I can also daylight through the stock. Does it slide open? Not a problem. Yeah, great. It really helps that they're super light. <laughs> <laughs> well, and yeah, just to show here, there's no groove here. It's just riding it's against just... the track, against the stock. Yeah. I am oiling our final three windows. Okay. Yeah. Same thing again. Let's just cut it side. Mm Okay, with that, the windows are done. Yep, and I think the shed is looking really nice. It's looking a lot more finished than it has been, especially with getting rid of all that house wrap. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, we're happy to have it done. I know you saw us install fixed windows. Uh, we installed sliding windows. Uh, both are doing great. Water has not been coming in, even though we've been having rain. Uh, but overall, it's done really well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.